Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17 will be seen for the first time in just over a week. While we've heard a lot of speculation about what will be included, there's even more that's leaked recently, so I thought we'd go over those. Now Apple announced the full schedule of WWDC 2023 this week, where we'll have all the new software and products announced. So the WWDC 2023 keynote starts at 10 a.m. Pacific or 1 p.m. Eastern time on June 5th. You can go into the developer app, go to the WWDC. WDC tab here at the bottom and see more information about that. You can see the keynote, the state of the union, there's Apple design awards and different sessions and labs as well. So that will all be available through that app. Be sure to check it out. But as far as supported devices so far, we're not hearing any difference when it comes to iPhones, iPhone eight, eight plus all the way up to the 14 pro and pro max should still be supported. That could change, but at this time, at least it looks like it will be getting iOS 17. Now we've heard that Apple is planning to include a new journaling app with iOS 17. And there's some more details about this. It's said to not only focus about your regular thoughts, but also what you're doing throughout the day where it can sort of add this information based on what you're doing on sensors on the iPhone. So whether you're nearby people or everything else. So apparently using the app, will have a feature called all day people discovery, which knows when it's around other people that have iPhones with that app. The app would also know when you're receiving texts, phone calls, and notifications to help incorporate and suggest topics to write about. Now this sounds a little bit un Apple like, but typically they'll keep all of that information on the device. It's already got that information anyway. So you could probably be able to use that throughout those apps. And of course you'd be able to opt out in Apple's privacy settings, as that's something that you could probably just turn off if you wanted to. But if you want to journal and it sort of keeps track of your location and more, that would be a great way to do it. The journaling app is also said to go around along with Apple's health app where you could actually log different things such as your overall mood and feeling of what's going on throughout the day. If you want to help record that information and maybe it will tie back to the journaling app as well. So that's something I'm not sure how many people would use, but some people have even said that it would be more automatic and you could just turn it off if you didn't want to use it. The next set of features Apple is working on is share play and airplay. We've had both of those for a little while, but with iOS 17, Apple's looking to improve airplay where it would work faster and more efficiently and better with devices that are not made by Apple, such as different TVs. So some TVs you can airplay to. So if we hit play on a song, we could airplay directly to that TV and hopefully it would connect much faster or just work more efficiently in general. The same is true with share play this year. While we've gained that feature before share play will also also get updated to make it easier to share that content when using FaceTime and watching together. So maybe it will allow that over more content. Maybe it could be games or something else, but it should allow it for more content. Now, the exciting part to me is the next set of features for the lock screen. According to the latest from Mark Gurman, a new iOS 17 feature will enhance the lock screen to turn it into a smart display. If the phone is rotated, the landscape and not being used or is locked, the iPhone will be able to show relevant information such as information related to weather, maybe weather widgets, calendar appointments, notifications, home controls, and more. So that's something I would really look forward to where we'd have all of the relevant information that we could use when we're not using our phone. The lock screen is something I rarely look at, but if it was on a stand rotated, maybe charging with MagSafe and we had relevant information, that's something I would definitely welcome. And the more exciting thing to me even is that this feature is apparently coming to iPad as well. So the iPad could maybe be on a stand or a dock and be used as a home control, maybe like a Google home hub. So maybe you'd have all of your home controls here with your different cameras, different controls for your different devices, whether that's home pod or different office plugs, things like that, or even light strips or anything else you might have attached to your home. So that's something I would love to see. You could take an old iPad, maybe that you're no longer using that you were ready to maybe throw out or recycle and turn it into a home hub. If it supports iPad OS 17, that's something I'm looking forward to greatly as I would love to have that on my iPhone. Now there's some features we know a hundred percent are coming to iOS 17. Apple's already set it and they have to do with accessibility. I covered them in depth in a separate video, but just a few things with cognitive accessibility along with live speech, personal voice and point and speak and magnifier, which I think all of them are great features and should be very helpful for those that want to use them. Such as this example here, where you're actually setting the time on a microwave and it's telling you what you're actually pointing at. 
that. This is great for those that are visually impaired or just need a little extra help. So it's using the magnifier app along with the LIDAR enabled iPhones to tell you exactly what you're pointing at and then speak what it is. And then also you can train the device to use your voice to speak back if you have trouble speaking. So these are all great features. Of course, you don't have to use them, but we know they're coming to iOS 17 as Apple has already told us. There's a few things we've heard before, but we're hearing more about. For example, Wallet is said to get some significant updates, according to Mark Gurman, where the Wallet app maybe will be more organized. If you go into it now, there's not a lot that you can do as far as reshuffling cards or having it organized better. And as Apple adds more and more features, you'll have different things with available cards with driver's license or state IDs. They seem to be a little bit disorganized. So I think they could make me maybe make this a little bit better. Also find my is said to gain some more location service enhancements, according to Mark Gurman. So maybe there'll be things we're not thinking of yet more device up updates or enhancements, or maybe it will just be laid out a little bit different. Also, the control center is said to get an update. Now, whether or not that means it will look the same or just have more customization is hard to say, but either way, all of the different people that leak this information are saying to expect an update. If you have an iPhone 14 Pro or 14 Pro Max with a dynamic island or the upcoming iPhone 15, there should be more information displayed in the dynamic island, making better use of it. It's sort of a nice notification area and to have a few more things there would be welcome. Of course, a lot of people want stability and reliability, and it's said to really focus on that. So it won't be as feature heavy, but will have stability and reliability as well as performance enhancements, even for older devices. So I know a lot of people are weary of upgrading to new device or new versions on their older devices because they're afraid of performance, but this seems to be improving it. Also, there's said to be search improvements, updates to CarPlay, side loading of apps, although that may only be available in Europe to comply with their laws there, and AR VR headset compatibility once they show off that headset. So lots of things coming to iOS 17. I'm excited about that lock screen integration seems to be great. Hopefully we'll have some sort of home hub here where we can use that on either an older iPad or just on our iPhone when it's sort of charging on a dock. That's something I would definitely welcome and would hope to see very, very soon. So let me know what you want from it. Still no news about split screen, split screen or split view multitasking. Maybe they'll include that, but so far there's been nothing about that. But other than that, I'm looking forward to this update. I think stability is one of the things many of us want, along with some nice features as well. Let me know what you're looking most forward to in iOS 17. And if you're going to try the betas, I would expect them on June 5th. You'll need to be a developer. Usually a week or so later, they'll release beta two and also public beta one. Then we'll have betas all the way until September where they usually release it to the public. So it won't be available to the public right away, but it will be available to beta testers and developers. So look out for that. Of course, we'll have iOS 16 updates until then as well. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.